starts right now. Storm stretching from the border to San Antonio to New Braunfels and beyond. We are keeping an eye on that radar tonight. Adam Kasky is standing by with the latest. Adam. Yeah, we have new severe thunderstorm warnings and these storms have just developed and are constantly changing by the minute, so it's hard to stay on top of them, but we're here for you. The thunderstorm that was in Comal County has dissipated. We're seeing these storms cycle. They'll cycle down, then they'll pulse back up and they'll go through these processes over time. Right now, what we're focusing on is Medina County and now moving into western and northwestern Bear County, far western San Antonio, talking Alamo Ranch area, all the way around to La Contera and the Rim. This pur the purple areas you see scattered, we'll get into more detail on those in just a little bit, but that's where we have some hail and potentially large hail, at least one inch in diameter. And I say at least because these storms are changing so quickly and they we've been seeing them strengthen very quickly, especially closer to Austin throughout the day. So we're anticipating similar conditions around here. Once you get development, it can then blossom and strengthen very fast. So let's just look at the purple areas. This is some hail around Holotus stretching over toward UTSA. This is scattered around from Bandera Road 16 all the way over to La Contera. This little portion of hail, this purple part you see right here, this just developed within the thunderstorm just a few minutes ago. But the other parts of hail have been around for a little bit longer. Right here, just south of Jan San Geronimo and west of Holotus, this cluster of hail, that's going to make it to Holotus. That's headed eastward, and that cluster will make it to Holotus by 10, 11 p.m. That's when it makes it to Bandera Road, Highway 16. So if you're west of there in Holotus, it'll be a little before 10, 11 p.m. Then we have this next hail core, and this is a bigger one. And this one most recently has strengthened as well. And I think the hail has grown a little bit larger, probably closer to a ping pong ball or a golf ball size hail. This is headed into Western Bear County and headed towards SeaWorld and Alamo Ranch. I'm gonna turn off the lightning, analyze just this portion of the hail, and then I'll time it out for you as well. And please excuse my raspy and crackly voice. I got a little excited during the uh, eclipse yesterday, so just bear with me, please. Anyway, here's a 3D view of this, and notice the purple that stretches and arcs up into the thunderstorm. That is the large hail within this storm, and the large hail, particularly in the purples, that's usually about the size of a quarter to maybe a ping pong ball, but once we start seeing black colors, within those hail cores and we're not seeing oh we're seeing a little bit see this suspended aloft right here that little bit of black within the within that hail core that's likely some larger hail closer to golf ball size hail that's our experience with this technology and its analysis anyway now let's give you a timing on just the hail portion of the thunderstorm i need to adjust my view over a little bit so give me just one second here and get this just right for you we're going to look this way with that part of the storm and here we go okay going to make it to brennan high school by 10 19 pm taft high school 10 21 brandeis high school 1057. You see a lot of schools listed on here because those are common landmarks in these areas. And that's the hail portion, the biggest hail portion of this thunderstorm right now. The rim, likely to clip it at the rim at 1049 p.m. Clark High School, 1049. Shavado Park, 1055. And assuming this stays on track, it could even make it to Stone Oak area by 1108 p.m. And did you see here, we just got a new scan of this this thunderstorm uh, from the radar and it gave us a different look and so we're going to look at it this way because of those black colors that i was talking about before now we're going to look at more of a two-dimensional cross-section slice through this thunderstorm and this slice right here shows you the purple hail reaching up into the thunderstorm arcing up and over its forward motion, which is common. 
excuse me, <clears throat> common, but we also have this stronger part in, with the black, and that is some of the largest hail that is now just crossing over the county line into Western Bear County. And we have a community here. Uh, you've got Alamo Ranch, Taft High School, Northwest Vista. We warned you earlier, try to park under in a garage or in a shelter or covered if you can this evening just for this risk and this risk lasts all the way through about 3 4 a.m that's our severe thunderstorm watch okay back to the 2d view so you can have something a little more familiar to see this is the area of the largest hail now probably let's actually get an estimate on this hail size and we've noticed our um well i need a new update from our technology here but the algorithms within it now saying two inch diameter hail and i think it could be even larger than that two inch diameter hail moving to the northeast at 17 miles per hour or so that's about the size of an egg you know a chicken's egg a hen's egg that's about the size hail you can expect within this portion of the severe thunderstorm that's just that portion of the thunderstorm. We have more severe thunderstorms down to the south. We'll get back to this one in just a moment for y'all on the far west side and headed into Alamo Ranch. So get ready. It's going to get even louder and you're going to hear that hail that's potentially damaging and often does cause damage when it's that size. But this development that we have south down I-35 this is also a severe thunderstorm warning due to the potential of a 60 mile per hour wind gust with it, switching radars for a better view. And even pockets of hail, these purple areas, that's hail scattered throughout these thunderstorms. And that's what's unique about what we have right now. Often we have like one thunderstorm, a supercell, and a well-defined hail core, just one hail core within it. Right now with this line that's developing, we're seeing multiple pockets of hail develop within this line and constantly modify, change, strengthen, weaken, strengthen, weaken, weaken, depending on where you are. So these severe thunderstorms go all the way down. Carrizo Springs, it just passed through Crystal City. You're in the clear right now, even down into Webb County. We have those warnings. Catula, you're not included yet, but Pierce Hall, Dilly, be prepared. Of course, Divine, Lytle, Natalia over to Somerset. But right now the primary threat in our area is this little cluster right there in purple and black that we we're showing you before. Some small hail around UTSA and Holotus, but the larger hail about to get to SeaWorld, giving that a time of arrival for SeaWorld. So if you live in, or in and around SeaWorld, 10, 18 p.m., Taft High School likely to get clipped by this same time, 10, 18 p.m. If you live around John Jay High School, it would arrive at 10, 25 p.m. PM. And remember, that's just the hail portion of the thunderstorm and some of the largest hail within this thunderstorm. Development elsewhere has just been spotty and non-severe, but we're seeing a lot of development along this line as it progresses eastward. Give you that motion. Sarah, is it set to, uh, let's see, never mind, the radar set to uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes time lapse is what you're seeing here. I'm going to gather some more information and then I'll be back with you to give you another update and time it out for more communities. Yeah, obviously we've got you covered on air on the night beat. We've got you covered online as well. That's right. And anytime you hear something, Adam, just, you know, we'll let do. us know and you'll absolutely right back on. Yep. Thank you. All right, let's get to two alleged cases of domestic violence. As you see, our Weather Authority app always available and always on. Two alleged cases of domestic violence reminding all of us of the dangers these cases pose. Kerr County Sheriff's deputies have made an arrest in a deadly shooting overnight in Kerrville. Deputies say the suspect now charged with murdering his wife. We're told Isidro Arias Benitez allegedly shot his wife, Ana Marie Puente Ortiz, while the couple's children were in the home. Deputies say they arrived at the home on Corbin Circle in Kerrville, not far from I-10, about 1.45 last night. They found Ortiz with a gunshot wound. She was taken to the hospital where deputies say she died. Tonight, those children are safe with family members. Now we're going to show you 63 year old Cynthia Schubert. She's charged with murdering 62 year old Edward Canales from Canyon Lake. The Kamal County Sheriff's Office says that Schubert shot and killed Canales March 12th and then turned herself in. The two were said to have been in a relationship. With these two deadly cases, we want to remind you if you or a loved one is experiencing a domestic violence situation, it does not have to continue. There is help out there. Scan the QR code on your screen right now. It'll take you to a list of free resources where you or someone you love can get the help 
they need. Not guilty. That's the verdict the jury came to in the murder trial of this man, Tavares Anderson. Anderson accused of shooting and killing Malcolm Everett during an argument in a 2021 shooting at an apartment complex. Anderson's lawyer told the jury that Anderson shot and killed Everett in self-defense, saying Everett attacked Anderson. He was facing up to life in prison today. That jury found him not guilty. Now look at what happened this morning on Loop 410 near San Pedro. A school bus right there. It hydroplaned across several lanes on the highway. We just want to get this out of the way. Nobody was hurt, but it was scary. That bus belongs to Pre-K 4 SA. About eight adults and 40 students were on it. School officials say that all of the children on that bus, they were secured in safety seats. Now, a UTSA student is in hot water tonight, accused of tagging parts of the campus with what's been called anti-Israel graffiti. A source familiar with that investigation tells us that the, the messages included profanity aimed at the Israeli military. There was also a message that draws attention to civilians being killed in Gaza, along with Palestinian flags painted on some posters. Now, UTSA's president posted that response that you see there on Twitter saying the school supports free speech but has zero tolerance for damage to its property. The UTSA police chief says the 21-year-old student faces academic discipline and the student was also arrested on criminal charges and has since been released on bond. Take another look at radar right now, and we talked about those line of storms descending on San Antonio going through the Medina Lake area, Hondo, Divine, and farther north. Adam Kasky will continue to track it when we come back. Live we'll look outside with our live cam. We're looking west over the medical center area. Those are the taller buildings off in the distance with a lot of lightning flashing. That's where the storms are coming in. They're heading toward the camera as we speak as they're moving into West Bear County, the west side around 1604, SeaWorld and Alamo Ranch. Let's get to the maps. I do want to point out the primary risk and threat this evening is hail. We have that on the high end, but there is the threat for some 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. That's a moderate threat and moderate risk as we go through the rest of the night. And here's the latest with authority radar. I have the lightning counter on here just so you can get an idea of just how much lightning uh, that we have within this map field of view at any given time. And we still have some hail within this storm. It's just the hail core has evolved quite a bit. And now it's just north of Highway 90, stretching west of 1604, just west of SeaWorld and Stevens High School. It's this purple area that's just crossing over 1604 at Highway 90 and just north of Highway 90. And then into the neighborhoods here, American Lotus Street, Madrona Street, we've got Aspen Silver, Wayward Daisy, Dove Canyon, you're about to get it. That's the neighborhood where the hail is moving in. But I wanna point out, inside 1604, Marbach Road here and Ellison Drive, or South Ellison Drive and Marbach Road. This is where the hail is going to be next. So Royal Estate, uh, Douglas Drive, Echo Bluff, Breeds Hill Drive. Uh, you know this area, Douglas Drive. If you're in there, Fillmore Drive. Just you have the heavy rain right now, but the hail is going to be next. And that's this purple area. It's just minutes away from there. We're also getting this hail development now where we were looking with our camera um, just north of there along I-10 and west of I-10 from UTSA southward to Hebner Road. You got Oakland Estates. This is a new pocket of hail that just popped up and strengthened and is just about to hit Clark High School. It's right over I-10. How's I-10 and Hausman, you know, all these car dealerships along here. This is where we have the hail moving. It's moving toward Clark High School. And then thereafter, Chavano Park. Here's the ETA for this batch of hail in Chavano Park, 10.22 p.m. So obviously, you're just a few minutes away in Chavano Park for that, for that hail. But this hail core stretches southward now all the way down to the medical center area. So Churchill High School, Castle Hills, you're also in the line of this hail. Castle Hills, 1027 p.m. If you're around Churchill High School, if you live close to the high school, I mean, we're talking within a few blocks, 
1027 p.m. That's when this portion of hail within the thunderstorm would make it there. So you see we've had this hail suspended throughout these storms. As I was talking about earlier, that's one of the tricks that we have out there right now is it's not like one or two storms with those defined hail cores that you just track. These are constantly changing, popping up, pulsing, cycling, getting stronger, getting weaker and going through those cycles. This is the past hour and you see the development just over the past hour. Most of these storms popped up with the lightning becoming more intense, electrified. The storm's becoming a little more electrified and that's often a sign of some strengthening. You see how there becomes more lightning here. Those white, white lines or those cloud to ground lightning strikes. Whenever you see a higher number of those in a short amount of time and you see those numbers increase, that's a good sign of um, strengthening. Get ready from Catula to Dilly to Pearsall and then up into Divine. You've got some severe thunderstorms there as well, capable of producing large hail. Quick switch over radar sites so you can get a better view of that. If you're south down I-35, uh, this is what you have coming toward you. Purple area right here between Carrizo Springs and Catula. That's headed toward Dilly. All of it moving at pretty much the same pace. So Dilly, that would make it at 11.07 p.m. Pearsall, you could get a little bit of that hail action at 11.15 p.m. Divine Natalia, almost into Bigfoot. You've just got some pockets of hail scattered around uh, your area. We'll have to watch them and monitor them for further development. But now the focus has shifted here to where we have some of the newest hail that has formed. And I'm going to turn off some of these other elements and just get to the hail tracks. This shows you the paths of the hail throughout the evening so far and put this into motion over the past hour. And look at all this hail around our area. Saw a big hail core pop up north end of Bulverde up towards Spring Branch, dissipated over Canyon Lake. And now we're seeing this thunderstorm, the hail pulsed up over Rio Medina and then dissipated toward Alamo Ranch, whereas this hail core pulsed up right now over I-10. And that's what you're seeing uh, with, with this thunderstorm, the purple area now turning black, which is not a good sign uh, right here along I-10. This is just north of Balcones Heights from Clark High School to Oakland Estates. And when I say the, um, the black color and the large hail, I mean, it looks a lot bigger to the radar. For comparison's sake, right here on I-10, 68 decibels, you go into the heavy rain and it's 46 decibels. That's the, the, how big it is to the radar. Sarah. Yeah, um, I'm on the traffic. You're on traffic, traffic Mike? Traffic Mike. All right, control room. Uh, Sarah's on traffic Mike. So we have confirmation. Thanks, Adam. We have confirmation of at least, uh, it looks like dime-sized tail out of Petrenko on the west side. So. Power up. Dime-sized tail on Petrenko on the west side. Okay. So keep that in mind. And we've seen... These thunderstorms capable of larger hail, and I do think this is larger than dime size hail right here. We'll isolate just the hail core as that's the primary threat within this thunderstorm. Yes, there's a lot of rain elsewhere, but we're focusing on the most important part, which is the hail that's suspended up into the storm and scattered around. Um, you can fly around it, <clears throat> see it. This is where it's moving. It's headed toward Castle Hills, Lee High School, the airport. If we need to take a break or anything, let me know. Nickel we'll sized hail, Marbach 1604. Okay, so Marbach 1604, that's that other portion of hail that got a little bit smaller, luckily. That's the storm that kind of cycled down. It was a lot bigger. Adam, I want to show you something. Uh, I don't know if you can pot up my mic real quick. Let's go to 90 yes. at General McMullen, and there is a major traffic accident here and they've shut down the eastbound lanes of 90 as you head towards 35. But what you're seeing right now is that's the storm moving into where this area has already had a major accident. That's traffic that's backed up basically from General Hudnell past General McMullen. That's where this camera is. And that gives you an idea of the winds and the storms as they move in there. It's already an emergency situation. A wreck has all lanes closed on 90 eastbound. It's the last thing that you really want to see whenever you're stuck in traffic that you're having to go through this. But if you have loved ones on the road right now, just uh, keep that in mind. And I'll ask our weather team shortly if they happen to get an update on what's happening in that area. But 
Steve, that camera was not shaking like that well, two minutes ago. That's the yeah. storms moving through there, the severe yeah. storms. Uh, as you see, Highway 90 completely shut down, and that storm catching up to it right there, Adam. Excuse me. It is catching up to it. But luckily, the hail size has really shrunken within Good. that part of the storm. Good. For those folks that can't get anywhere and can't do anything, um, the hail size hasn't uh, has actually dropped a little bit for them. There is still, of course, the potential for quarter size hail mixed into it. We just haven't gotten the reports yet down near John Jay High School and 90 in general McMullen. That area still has some hail headed their way. It's just these hail cores are constantly changing and evolving. Let's look at this over the past hour and you'll see it pop up and plume up right there. Little bit, it's little bit by bit. Now I wanna time it out for you. So I'm gonna stop this and the hail's moving into Castle Hills now. Uh, this chunk of hail, it's headed eastward. So let's Clark High School, Castle Hills, headed eastward. Wrong way, one more time, get a timeline for you. All right. I can only imagine how those folks are feeling stuck on 90 with all of the thunder and lightning happening. As you said, thank goodness the hail has started to weaken yep. in that area, but still, that is, uh, that is not a situation you want to find yourself in, folks. Dramatic video when you see <laughs> that storm moving in and jostling around that camera and all those people who are stuck with nowhere to go because 90s shut down in the eastbound lanes. All right, so this hail core we're watching along I-10 right now near Medical Center, that's headed east. Assuming it stays intact in everything and keeps its track eastward the way it is. It's at the International Airport, 10.32 p.m. Alamo Heights, 10.33. MacArthur High School, 10.36. Windcrest, 10.44. Converse at 10.54. Now, not all of these areas are included necessarily within the warning. Actually, these areas are included within the warning now. Yeah, the warning got extended eastward, so they are. Everybody is uh, included in the warning. Universal City, 11 p.m. Shirts, 11.03. Clemens High School would be 11.05. And that's not the heavy rain. That's the hail portion of the thunderstorm on the north end of it. Then we have this other section of hail that looks like it's pulsing up a little bit toward Memorial High School, and we'll get a timeline on this for those of you in the path of that exact chunk of hail right here, that hail core within the storm. And we're moving at about 24 to 25. So this one, Jefferson High School at 10.33 p.m., downtown San, San Antonio at 10.36. And if you could switch the prompter, Johnny, please, so I can see it up there. Um, thank you. Uh, Southtown at 1037, Monta Vista at 1038, Frost Bank Center, 1044 p.m., Kirby at 1053. And again, that's assuming it just stays on track and on pace the way it is. Not all hail is created a equal. We're going to look at KSAC Connect and see what kind of pictures. Are they cloudy hailstones or clear hailstones? We actually got a pretty dramatic video of hail falling onto the water okay. uh, into the pond. I'd love to be able to show that if we can switch. It's up over. in the browser over there. Okay. Yeah, yeah I've, I've got, got it in the browser. I've got it. Okay. Let's go to KSAC Connect. Our pins. Yeah, you'll have to do that. I'm okay. sorry. No worries. I'll bring it up real quick here because we got some more interesting and dramatic video on KSAC Connect from our users here. Take a look at this video and you can see the hail falling onto the water, onto the ponded street there in the background. I don't know if we can zoom that in at all. Hey, give it a sec, usually it takes yeah, here. I promise it's worth it here. Yeah, it's hard to get this to go full screen sometimes. Okay, well let's see if we can exit out and try it again. Well, you guys are doing this. I just want to yeah. update 90 at General McMullen. We showed you the one cam camera. We looked the eastbound lanes. They've switched the camera around and now they're looking west and you can see just how bad that's how big the backup is. It's got to be at least to 151 as you look westbound on Highway 90. Again, there's a major accident past General McMullen, past General Hudnell towards 35 that has 90 completely shut down and the storms are coming through there. You see some other emergency vehicles there on your screen, but this gives you an idea of how big the backup is as we look westbound. Like I said, it's to at least 151 if you're familiar with Highway 90 as it goes west. Now, we do have another live shot here from I-10 at West Avenue. If we could pull that up. 
right yeah, now. Yeah, that's our storm. One that's our our, our storm tracker out there right now, and you can see just how heavy the rain is out there. Again, this is I-10 and west to give you an idea of just some, some uh, how hard the rain's yep. coming down there, even without hail. I'm not seeing hail mixed in with this rain right now, but it just shows you how heavy that downpour is, Adam. And that's I-10 and what? West. west. West, okay, so I-10 and West Avenue, the hail is just a little north of there, a little bit, probably a little bit of hail mixing in with this, but most of the hail we were talking about is kind of splitting north and south of that location in this purple area right here um, that's starting to come together. But, but now what I'm seeing is near Divine and Natalia, another pocket of hail, that purple, that has recently gotten a little bit stronger. I'm zooming out so we can get the bigger scope and depth and just focus in on some of these areas of hail and show you how they've developed and changed. And so I'm gonna do a big 3D view here, okay? This is a big 3D view of these thunderstorms. And usually to get this hail, they have to reach up to about 40,000 feet high and that's easily what they're doing. But now just focusing on the hail portions of it. And you see down near Divine in Natalia, it's suspended up into the clouds and some of it is dropping down onto the ground. Crossing over I-35, Natalia, you're up next. Lytle, you're just moments away. Lytle, you could expect that at 10.43 p.m. That would be the large hail within this, making it to Lytle. Then we come up into San Antonio, and we've seen this one plume up a little bit. We have now what's formed basically a line of hail north to south in San Antonio. Yeah, we'll start to be able to hear it over the station. And over my decade of doing this here, my ears have kind of calibrated to the size of hail and how loud it is on our flat roof. I'm not kidding. I can kind of tell just by the sound of it sometimes uh, how big the hail is once it hits here. Anyway, this is all suspended up into the storm, but up out ahead of it and then falling down right over the heart of San Antonio here, about to hit 281. So Monta Vista, you're getting it now. Hill Country Village, you're up next. Chavano Park, you're getting hit. Hollywood Park, a few minutes away. Stone Oak, let's see. For Stone Oak, it is just going to clip southern portions of Stone Oak. Moving through Castle Hills, about to hit the airport. Alamo Heights, you just have your minutes away in Alamo Heights of this hail core hitting Alamo Heights at 10.37 p.m., so under 10 minutes. Uh, let's talk about Salado Junction, 1043. Kirby, 1047 p.m. Here's a new update. Windcrest, the hail, making it at 1043 p.m. You know, Adam, I'm struck by, as, you, as you're looking at this, it's not that wide a storm path, like as it moves through. Whoa, oh, we just we flickered just here. Power, yeah. power uh, just took a tell power the engineering surge. to make sure our generator. <laughs> yeah, I hope the generator's the on here. Yeah. yeah, generator's on. Yeah, now it's kind of forming into one big, long, stretch of hail, one hail core that's extended, which we don't often see one stretching this long of a span. Usually it's a more localized area, but this is stretching. This is a 16 mile wide wow. or long, I should say, 16 miles long by up to about seven miles wide uh, in the thickest part. And again, Kirby, Windcrest, Selma, Shirts, you're about to get hit by this all the way down south side of San Antonio, downtown, all the way to Harlandale High School. The mission's about to get clipped, but I do think some of the worst hail within it is between Highway 90 all the way up to 410 and even 1604. See, the cutoff is right here. Uh, you know, you're talking like Camp Bullis and just south of Camp Bullis, uh, Rogers Ranch Vineyard areas, Stone Oak. Um, and actually speaking of, so we have the large hail, we have a lot of lightning, and that's something I've kept off here for a little bit, but lightning often causes power outages in our area. And here's the latest estimate. And this is not the number from CPS Energy. Uh, right now, we're estimated at about 100. Yeah, we've got it. We actually have the map from CPS Energy. So we've got more from CPS If we want to bring Energy. that up right now, it looks so like. So we see it there. It looks like uh, more than 1,100 homes and businesses that so far have been affected that are without uh, power at this uh, hour. If we could just look a little closer here, it looks like most of those are really happening towards the west, just north right there of Leon Valley. But that's uh, inevitably what you 
see whenever you have storms like this, when storms are this powerful or they sound like this, especially the way we're hearing them right now over the station, Steve. This is what happens. Yeah, and, and, and I'm, I, I continue to monitor the situation at 90 and General McMullen where we have a camera and it is stretching back miles and miles and miles. It's the eastbound lanes of 90 as you head towards downtown San Antonio and I-35 there uh, to head north into downtown San Antonio. You can see it's at a complete standstill. There's a major accident on Highway 90 right now. Uh, we're looking at how far it stretches back. The major accident is like I said, closer to where 90 and 35 come together, closer to like maybe the general Hudnell area. Uh, but, you know, that storm is coming through there and there's nowhere to go for these people that are in this traffic right now. It is not moving at all. It is a major wreck that has shut down 90 at the most inopportune time weather wise. As you can tell, uh, you know, people just cannot get off that roadway right now. Uh, the westbound lanes of 90, that's what you see that are going away from us. They're fine. It's the eastbound lanes that are backed up at least to 151 and beyond right now. Yeah, but you can see how people are even driving there with their emergency uh, with, with their with their lights on. So even they're having to take their time. We're actually seeing a, an emergency crew right there on the other side of, of, of that road. But you got to imagine it's got to be incredibly frustrating if you're sitting on the other side of the road watching other cars uh, go by. Well, you know? and then you've got to deal with the storms that are port that are coming through, too. Right. Adam, uh, I'm also, I know you're working on getting some of the KSAT Connects uh, video that we have up. Yeah. As you look at this map and you talk about places like, you know, to the north, Live Oak and some of those areas, uh, if you live there right now, what is, what's your advice to some of the people that haven't seen this storm yet? Uh, you stay put right now. And yeah. It's too late to go out and try to move things around. Um, you just stay put and get ready for it to hit, let it pass and cross your fingers and hope for the best right now. But it's just a few minutes away from Live Oak shirts, Ikea there, yep. you know, that neighborhood, Randolph Air Force Base, people on the road, it's slowing them. Well, this is still 90 at General McMullen where there's an issue, but you see how heavy the rain is. And actually speaking of how heavy it is, let's go back over to the max one with our uh, KSAC connect and, you know, real visual.